Here's a quick look into the nuclear medicine department of a hospital. Technetium, or more like Technetium 99M, is used for a lot of scans, the so-called scintigraphies, and we get that technetium, the so-called alloate, from a generator, which is sometimes referred to as a technetium cow. Here you can see this technetium cow. Um, it is a sliced open model, obviously, usually it's of course closed up. Uh, you can see in the middle there's a little vial that contains the mother substance, molybdenum-99, which is fixed to uh, some sort of metal rod, and as it decays into the daughter, which it does with a half-life of about 67 hours, um, it produces technetium-99M, the metastable state of technetium-99. Metastable means that after the decay, it is a beta-minus decay of the mother substance, molybdenum-99, technetium-99 stays in an excited state for a long time, and only emits the gamma ray uh, from this excit excitation stage at a later time. It does so with a half-life of 6 hours. And as the gamma ray uh, has a very useful energy of 141 kilo electron volts, it is very useful for nuclear medicine. Also, technetium is a rather harmless substance, unlike, for example, plutonium, which is not only radioactive but also highly toxic to the body. Technetium is a quite harmless substance that is quickly excreted again. So you can see that this molybdenum rod in the middle is shielded with lead, and on the bottom there's a little pouch that is usually filled with sodium chloride, a sterile solution of sodium chloride, and on the top, you can hardly see it, but on the top there's a little needle, and if you pinch that needle with an evacuated cylinder, you can simply suck up the sodium chloride, which is in the bottom of the generator, it will throw, flow through the chamber in the middle. The molybdenum is uh, chemically fixed to the rod, so very few of it comes off. But the daughter, the technetium 99M, will easily flush off and be in the so-called alloate in the solution you have on the top in your previously evacuated bottle. That's a very simple principle, and that is how you milk a technetium cow. So here, on the middle and to the left, you can see our tiny bottle of Alluate. It doesn't contain very much activity, just 1.3 gigabecquerel. That is enough for, depending on the scan, 1 to 15 patients. Really depends what they're getting, a thyroid scan or heart scan. And uh, it's still quite a lot, 1 gigabecquerel, 1.3 gigabecquerel it is actually. That is 1.3 billion decays. 1.3 billion gamma rays being emitted every single second. And that's quite hot. This explains why technetium is stored in lab pigs and if you need to handle it, you use distance as your friend. Because as of the inverse square law, which says that the dose rate is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, which basically means that if you have a dose rate at 10 centimeters and you increase your distance to 20 centimeters, you can reduce the dose to just a quarter of what it is at 10 centimeters. So here you can see we have dose rates of over 3 millisieverts power, now over 4 millisieverts power. That's 4,000 microsieverts power. Normal background radiation is just about 0.1 to 0.3 microsieverts power. So we're in the nanosieverts range for background radiation, and this is millisieverts. So, distance, shielding, and working quickly is important. We're now placing the little alluate into our activimeter. It's a sodium iodide dopothallium detector. It's a bow hole detector. And it will determine our correct activity for the alluate, which it now reads as 1349 megabecquerel. Let's place our dosimeter a little further away, and we can see we only have a few hundred microsieverts power, no more thousands of millisieverts, and now placing the technetium into a little lead container. It actually, that is glass, but it is a lead glass. So you can see as the Gamma Scout readjusts to determine the dose rate, it quickly drops to about normal levels. 2.7 microsieverts power, 0.4 microsieverts power, and basically normal background radiation levels again. 
just due to shielding it with a little piece of lead glass. Then it's just about, I don't know, a third of an inch thick or so. So at the distance of about one inch to the source, we have a dose rate of less than one microsievert per hour, that is less than five to seven times normal, if we're using the little lead glass container. And without shielding, we have dose rates of more than a few thousand microsieverts per hour at the same distance. So it is important to use shielding, to work quickly, and to keep your distance if you're handling radioactive material especially gamma emitters.